Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to hop right into the tutorial for the Marquise de Cat. Alright, so the invading Marquise de Cat wishes to exploit the woodland using its vast resources to fuel her economic and military machine. She scores victory points by constructing buildings in the woodland. In a typical game, the first player to score 30 victory points wins. In this scenario, we're going to try and see if we can get to 12. Alright, so when we start a game as the Marquise, we place our keep in one of the corner clearings. The keep is the cornerstone of our kingdom. Enemies may not build or place pieces in the clearing with our keep, but they can move there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and establish our keep in the top right. Alright, so our army greatly outnumbers the other factions, so we start with a warrior in every clearing except the one down here in the corner opposite of the keep, and that clearing is Erie territory. And now we get to place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. So we have three types of buildings, workshops, sawmills, and recruiters. And I believe the tutorial is going to just go ahead and place them automatically. Normally we would get to pick what goes where. Alright, and in the area are going to establish themselves in the bottom left. They've got six warriors. It's quite well defended. Alright, so at the start of the daylight phase, we're going to have an opportunity to craft cards from our hand using workshops. So we're going to take a look at this card here, the Arms Trader. So each card has a suit, and there are four different suits. There are the three suits representing the three types of clearings, and then there is the Bird Suit, which is wild and can count as any suit. Then every card has a crafting cost, which is the number of crafting pieces you'll need to use on that turn to craft a card. So this crafting cost is two fox crafting pieces. And then down here, it'll show us what we get given, either an item and points or some sort of effect that will help us throughout the game. So each workshop is going to contribute its suits, uh, its clearing suit towards paying crafting costs. And like I said, in this example, we could craft this arms trader if we had two workshops in fox clearings. Right now we have one workshop in a mouse clearing, so we can go ahead and craft Smuggler's Trail since the crafting cost is one mouse. And that is going to reward us with a bag item, which is an item for the Vagabond that we'll cover in a later video, and one victory point. Alright, so our victory points are shown down here on our uh, faction layout. Alright, and we're on our way to our goal of 12 for this tutorial. And now after the crafting phase, we can go ahead and take three actions. We score victory points when building. So each faction uh, can score victory points through crafting, and they can also score points through removing buildings in battle. Uh, and beyond those central mechanics, every faction has their own unique way of scoring points. And for the Marquise, that's going to be building your buildings. Alright, so we can only place buildings in clearings that we rule with available building slots. So they're highlighted here, there's two of them in this clearing, there's two of them in this clearing, one in this clearing, etc. And you can see we ruled the clearing because of the rule flag down here is orange, meaning that we have the highest presence in this mouse clearing. Alright, so workshops, as we just saw, allow you to craft cards in your hand. Sawmills are going to produce wood to help us build more buildings, and that's going to be important because as we create more buildings, they will start to cost more wood. And so in order to keep up with that demand, we're going to need to create more sawmills. And then we have the recruiters, which were uh, featured in the earlier tutorial, and those will help us bolster our defenses. So let's go ahead and build one in this clearing, and that's going to give us a point. And now that we have two recruiters, we can use the recruit action to recruit a warrior at both recruiting stations. Okay, and now it's going to ask us to go ahead and move our warriors to defend against the Eerie, so we can move from this clearing to this clearing, since we rule either the clearing we're moving from or to. Only have to rule one or the other. In this case, we rule both. Uh, so when you take a move, you can move... Uh, minimum one and up to as many warriors in the clearing as you want as part of a move and remember that 
the march action with the marquise actually gives us access to two moves. So we're going to go ahead and take our second one down here. And we're going to move both warriors again because this clearing is not really an imminent threat from the Eerie. They're all the way in the bottom left. Alright, so to yep, so to move you must roll either the clearing you're moving from or moving to. Right? Which is what I just said. So we've ruled this clearing and this clearing, but it would be fine if we ruled just one of them. The move would still be possible. If a different faction ruled both of these clearings, then that move would not be allowed. Okay, and during evening we draw one card and we can draw additional cards by having more recruiters on the map. Let's take a look at that real quick so we can see as we build more buildings they're worth more points but they're also going to be worth more wood and we can see that with our third and fifth recruiters we gain access to drawing more cards. going to tell us to do it right now. Oh no, phases of our turn, right? So in Birdsong, we're placing our wood at each sawmill. And then during daylight, first we craft, and then we can take up to three actions, and then finally we draw cards. Pretty straightforward turn for the Marquise. Alright, the Eerie are going to go ahead and take their turn here. Add cards to the decree, which is something we'll cover in our next video. Yep, each faction has unique capabilities and their own way of taking actions, as well as scoring points. So, they may not look like much yet, but their ever-growing decree will allow them to take more and more actions each turn, so long as their leader stays in power. So they're going to recruit here, and then they're going to move up to the clearing where we only have one warrior. So they've found a weak link in the defense, and they're going to go ahead and battle us in this clearing. Since we're the defender, we're gonna get the lower result here. But it did matter since we only had one cat, we're both gonna lose one warrior, and then the Eerie uh, come out ruling the clearing. Which they also ruled the clearing before the battle, but they're now gonna establish a roost there. Alright, so now we can use our field hospital's ability. So you, you'll see that this clearing is a mouse clearing, and whenever any number of Marquise warriors are removed in a clearing, you can spend a card matching the suit of that clearing so either a mouse card in this case or a bird card since bird cards are wild to return all the warriors that were removed to your keep so they kind of get carried back on a stretcher through the woods back to the keep and they're healed up and ready to fight again yep so let's go ahead and take a look at our abilities so we have the field hospital and we have the keep so we've covered both of those and then we can see things like the items we've crafted, the cards we've crafted, which we don't have any, the amount of warriors we have left that aren't on the board yet, and the amount of cards we have in our hand. Alright. Yeah, that, that message to discard card matching the suit of the clearing is uh, misplaced, and it's going to stay there for the rest of the tutorial unfortunately um, I know because I <laughs> already recorded this video I'm re-recording it because uh, of quality issues all right so we're gonna keep building our buildings to gain victory points and right now it's telling us that we have no cards that we can currently craft so we have to go ahead and skip the crafting phase and now we're gonna build a building of our choice I believe that we want to build up here because Yes, we don't have enough wood to build a recruiter at the moment, and so recruiters you want to put in central clearings, and sawmills you want to put, at least in the start of the game, further away from the action where they're harder to destroy. Because sawmills are really important for you to keep getting buildings uh, built. Alright, so let's uh, use our overwork action to produce another wood. So each sawmill produces one wood per turn, but if you want more wood, you can take an overwork action and discard a card matching the suit of one of your sawmills clearings to gain another uh, wood. And since birds are wild, we can use a bird card on this bunny clearing, gain another token, and you may spend any wood on the map connected to the clearing you wish to build in so long as they're connected by clearings you rule. So, say I want to build in this clearing, right? there's no sawmill here so I need to rule the clearing where the wood is coming from in this case I only have wood here 
So I need to rule the clearing where the wood is. Then a path needs to be formed from the wood to where I want to build and each clearing along that path, including the one I want to build in, I have to have a rule of. So right here, you can see I rule this clearing, this clearing, this clearing, and this clearing. If I didn't rule one of these two, I would have to go along a different path. Say I go here, 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 here. If I didn't rule either the clearing where the wood is or where I want to build, then building would simply not be possible because there's no way to complete that chain. I'd have to try and either build somewhere else or use different wood or battle my way into ruling that clearing. Maybe move some more warriors. All right, so we're gonna build a second building and we can only afford a workshop. So workshops don't need to go in the middle of the conflict either. So we can put one off to the side and we can take one more look at our building tracks. And as we build more of a particular building type, like I said, it's cost increases, but so do the amount of points it earns you. So it's better to stick to one or two types of buildings, generally sawmills or recruiters, uh, as you get later into the game, rather than try and spread it out and say you build six buildings, you'd get much more points building, say, four sawmills and two recruiters than building two of each. So we're out of actions, but we can discard a bird card to take an extra action using the Hawks for Hire ability. So let's go ahead and do that. So that means bird cards are very valuable for the Marquis. If you have a bird card, um, unless it is going to do something really, really valuable for you, I would save it for Hawks for Hire. Hawks for Hire is going to be your saving grace in a lot of situations. All right, so we're going to use that last action to recruit. And now the Eerie are going to take their turn. So here come the Eerie. Gonna just charge in to this fox clearing with all five of their warriors and initiate another battle. Alright, so it looks like we're going to learn how ambush cards work now. So the Eerie initiated battle on a fox clearing, and I have a fox ambush card. So using it, uh, I play the card before the hits are rolled, and two warriors from the Eerie are immediately removed. If the Eerie um, have their own ambush that matches the clearing, say a bird ambush, they could play that and cancel my ambush and neither ambush would take place. So now the battle is going to proceed as normal, the Eerie just start with two fewer warriors. Uh, but you'll notice that the Eerie still had three warriors standing, so they could still deal the maximum number of hits, which means that in an actual game situation, I would say that that ambush card is not, uh, that was not a very good usage of that card, uh, just because removing the warriors did not decrease the amount of hits they could deal, right? So if they had four or fewer warriors, you'd be cutting them down to at least two or even zero, uh, which would significantly impact how much damage they could do to you. So we're going to continue scoring points to defeat the Eerie by destroying roofs, constructing buildings, and crafting items that will reward us with victory points. Alright, so our summons are going to generate wood. We have no cards to craft, so let's skip crafting and go right ahead into daylight. This central clearing could do some beefing up. Let's build a recruiter. And you saw the little card icon there for a sec which means we have just uh, gotten access to our second card draw. And you see that right there. So now at the end of this turn, we'll draw two cards. Anything, yeah, so the Eerie have left this roost undefended. And if you'll remember from the last video, we talked about defenseless clearings right at the end there. The Eerie have a defenseless roost, so I am 100% guaranteed to, when I battle that roost, take it out. So I just moved these cats out of the clearing back to here. It's a more relevant clearing for them to be in. They're not really doing much down there. And then we need one cat to destroy this roost, so we're going to waste uh, more cats when it wasn't necessary. So destroying any building or token is going to give us one point. So that's another point for us. And we're going to go on to evening, draw a bird card, that's nice. And hopefully we'll get to 12 on this turn and finish the tutorial.
right? So the Eerie are entering turmoil because they could not recruit in a bunny clearing. And that happened because I just destroyed their bunny roost. But uh, yeah, we're going to cover all things Eerie in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Sawmills have once again generated some wood. Alright, so this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about here. We have the ability to craft sappers in the crafting phase. We have a mouse workshop, and sappers cost one mouse. The ability sappers gives us in battle as defender, we can discard this to deal an extra hit. Mm, I wouldn't say that card's necessarily worth it for a bird card. Probably going to want to hold on to that for hawks for hire, so I'm going to go ahead and skip crafting. And let's take a look at what we can build. We can go ahead and build a sawmill down here, I think. Yeah, let's place another sawmill. That's going to give us two points. And now we have to scrounge up the last two somehow. And I don't think we can because we would have to, in order to build again on this turn, the only thing we can build is a workshop which costs two wood and we currently have, unless I'm mistaken, zero wood on the board, yeah. So we'd have to overwork twice, which would uh, use our last two actions and we wouldn't be able to use our bird card for a fourth to build. So it looks like we're going to have to take another turn regardless of what we do. So let's go ahead and recruit. Increase our presence in some of these clearings. And then we can go ahead and consolidate our cats. Let's take one part of our march into here. Take one part of our march into here. And since we can't build, there's no real need to waste the bird card this turn. We're just going to go straight to evening and draw our cards. We're going to recruit in that fox clearing. generating three wood and we have the option to craft the mouse in a sack and in this situation sure one point might as well take it and now we've just got to score one more and obviously we know we can do that because we've got the wood I'm gonna go ahead and build say up in the clearing with the keep one more sawmill keep generating that wood for the cats and that's going to put us past the 12 point threshold, which is going to conclude the Marquis de Cat tutorial. Now, this was just an overview of the general faction uh, turn structure and what they are going to do on each of their turns. It wasn't necessarily a full fledged strategy guide talking about what sort of openings and strategies you're going to want to take as the Marquis to succeed in a game of root if you guys do want to see that uh, please let me know in the comments and uh, i will see you in the next video where we are going to be talking about the eerie dynasties